this tutorial, we're going to make another addition to my Game Maker Studio Physics series. Today, what we're going to be learning about how to apply forces. Now, forces are something that's crucial in physics. If you ever take a physics class, forces are what you're going to be covering non-stop from the first day of physics till the last day. You learn about how to add up different force vectors and figure out how how they create a net force and how that net force will affect the speed and velocity or no, the velocity and acceleration of different objects and, and, and all that. It's, it's loads of fun. But in Game Maker, we're going. There's like a function too you can use, and that that will allow you to apply a force in any, any way you want. And in today's tutorial, we're going to be applying it to our physics engine we made in the first tutorial, using force um, forces to uh, drag the different objects around. So that's what we're going to do. I'll see you there. All right, so let's get started. Um, here's what we're going to do. Here we, our, here we have our standard program that you know standard. You can click to create things. Only now, after you created them, you can drag them around like that and this is uh, how the force will be effect affecting them and the force varies depending on how far the mouse away is away from the object and that affects acceleration and mass accordingly and or it doesn't affect the mass but the acceleration is calculated based on the mass and the force so very cool stuff let's go ahead and show you how to do it alright so first thing we want every, anything that's OBJ Phi to um, be able to do, click and drag like that, but not OBJ Solid. So we're going to have to make some changes to what we had earlier and, and not parent that. And that means that we have to create a separate collision event in OBJ Phi for the OBJ Solid to make sure that that will still work. Oh, not change, duplicate. Duplicate collision with uh, Phi. And then here we're going to change to collision with Solid. There we go. All right, so when we uh, we want to create a variable that will be a local variable for the objects, which will be whether or not they're being dragged or not, or whether or not they're selected. So in creation, we're going to create a variable called selected, and I said equal to false because in the beginning you're not selected. And then if we click on this specific object, so if mouse left pressed, then we want it to be selected. So selected equals true, and then. At the end, the mouse is n not necessarily on this object, so if we, if we go, we want to go to global mouse, left released, when we're finished dragging it, then we want select it to be say, equal to false again. Okay. One thing, one more thing to keep in mind is that these left buttons. Right now, we have, we're having some two functions. Right now, we're making it uh, serve dragging the object and also create new ones. So we want to make sure that we don't accidentally create new objects when we're trying to drag things. So. For that, we're going to have to create a new variable. I'm going to call it global.drag. So I'm going to go ahead and set up in the control object. So global.drag equal to false. So that represents whether something's being dragged at this point in time. So let's go to OBJ Phi. So when we click, when we have something selected, we want global.drag to be set equal to false. Or no, it's true, true, true. Because that means something's being dragged. All right. And then, and then over here in the control, we're going to change left press to left released. Change event. A mouse, global mouse, left release. So now this will happen after something's been dragged. So we want to figure out whether what we want made after something's been dragged. So if global dot drag equals false, meaning that we haven't been dragging anything, we do this group of code. Otherwise, we're finished dragging now. So we'll set global dot drag be back equal to false. All right. So in other words, if it's equal to true, it'll trigger this, in which case we want set equal to false again. All right, so that's that's just some code out I need to get out of the way, which is necessary for what we want to do. Now for the actual physics part. Let's see. Mouse, global mouse, left button. So if the left button's being pressed at any point in time, we want to go with this code. We want to drag it, but only if it's selected. So we're going to say if selected. We'll say equals true, I guess. Then we want to apply the force um, in the direction of the mouse. So there's two functions in physics which deal with applying force. There's physics apply force and there's a physics a physics apply local force. Like this, it's relative to the xy axis of um, the room. So if you, uh, let's say, um, want to apply force in negative y direction, it'll go upwards every single time. But if it's, it says local and you apply it negative y direction, it'll go upwards relative to the object. So if it's rotated 90 degrees to the right, it'll go right. Local's nice if let's say you have a you have a platformer game where your guy can can rotate, then when you want him to apply a force upwards, meaning you want him to jump, if he's rotated 45 degrees, you want him to jump not straight up, but however 
at what ang whatever angle he's at. So that's when local is handy. But in this case, we want to just do apply force because we want to do it according to the direction where the mouse is and not have to do anything to do with the rotation of the object. All right, so as you can see down here, there are four parameters. First, x, y position, so we'll say x, y. And then, so we want to apply it at our center uh, or at the point of this object. If we apply it off-centered, it'll it'll have some weird things, which which we might want, but in this case, we don't want it. We just want to apply it to the center of mass of, of our object, or the reference point, I guess. And now we have the force in the x direction, force in the y direction. This will create a vector with a direction and magnitude. So we want this to depend different difference between our mouse coordinates and our coordinates. So for the x, we want it to be mouse x minus x. So the difference between the position of the mouse and the position of our object, we're going to go and divide that by 2, because I found that making it too high would be just too crazy. And then for the next part, it's just mouse y divided by oh, mouse y minus y, and that divided by 2. All right, so this is all, all, all there is to it of applying the force. So this will be constantly applied when you're dragging it. So it'll be constantly changing depending on where the mouse direction is. And this will make it go in the direction of the object. All right, so there you go. Now, when we run it, it should work. All right, so we can create things. It's not thinking that we're trying to drag things because we're not clicking on anything. But now we're clicking on something. It's not creating anything, and we're just dragging it. So there you go. And also, another thing that's kind of cool, remember we have the density for the circle set really low? Well, you notice that when I move around it, it's a lot lighter. That's because uh, the way force is calculated is force equals mass times acceleration. So this rectangle with a higher mass can't have as much acceleration, because if you solve for um, acceleration with force equals mass times acceleration, acceleration will be lower with a higher mass. And here it has lower mass, so acceleration is therefore higher. And that's how it works. So there you go. You n now know about forces, and there's, that's all there is to it for as far as applying things. I suppose in general you'd want to, if you're making a platform or something like that, you're going to want to apply it in a specific direction. Here we have it in general direction, but it sh it should be easy. If you understand this, it should be shouldn't be too hard. Just just using um standard variables. All right. So that's all for the tutorial. I hope you found it useful. I will talk with you guys later. I guess. Look forward to seeing you in my future tutorials.